In this lab exercise, we will explore the qualitative identification of starch in various samples using iodine, a simple yet powerful chemical test. Starch, a polysaccharide found in many plants, is a vital source of energy and a key component in numerous biological and food processes. The iodine test takes advantage of the unique interaction between iodine and the helical structure of amylose, a component of starch, to produce a distinctive black-blue color. This visual change allows us to easily detect the presence of starch in different materials. By the end of this experiment, you will gain practical experience in conducting the iodine test, understand the principles behind the chemical reaction, and learn to interpret the results effectively. As I said, the iodine test is based on the interaction between iodine and helical structure of amylose and starch. When iodine molecules fit into the helical structure, they produce characteristic blue-black color, indicating the presence of starch. To start iodine test, we need six test tubes. Note that test tubes are not heat-resistant, like those that we use in Benedict test. This means we are not going to heat them up. There is no need for this. Before starting with the test, we have to label each of the test tubes. And now we will follow simple protocol of the procedure. First, we will have to transfer two milliliters of each sample into the separate label test tubes. Okay, done, here it is. We have water, onion juice, potato juice, apple juice, soy milk, and suspension of starch. Note, instead of saying solution of starch, I said suspension of starch. This is more accurate than to say solution of starch. This is because starch does not dissolve in water to form the true solution. Instead, it forms suspension where the starch particles are dispersed throughout the liquid. Now, since we're clear on that, let's add three drops of iodine solution to each test tube containing the sample. Done, here it is, and now I will gently shake or swirl the test tubes to mix the iodine solution with the samples. Observe color change in the sample. Remember, we always examine the color on the white background. For the positive results on starch, you have to look for black or blue-black color. Amber color or any other colors do not count. Pause the video and record the results of the liquefied material we tested in the data table titled Results of the Iodine Test for Starch. By the way, which test tube contains the negative control? and which test tube control, uh, contains the positive control. Think about it. By now, you should know the answer. If you are unsure, watch my video on Benedict's test. Now, let's run the iodine test on raw materials such as raw onion, raw potato, and raw apple. This shouldn't be a brainer. Because all you have to do is to put a few drops of iodine on the surface of the fresh cut potato, apple and onion and wait for a couple of minutes. As you see, potatoes contain a significant amount of starch. Starch is the main carbohydrate in potatoes, making them a starchy vegetables. This starch content is what gives potatoes their characteristic texture and makes them an important energy source in many diets. The iodine test, which produces blue-black color in the presence of starch, would confirm the high starch content in potatoes. And you see it on this screen. By the way, do you know another starchy vegetable? How about corn? Yes, corn is another starchy vegetable. You heard of corn starch? But let's move on with the material we test in this exercise. How about an apple? Are apples starchy? Raw apples do contain starch, but the amount varies depending on starch of ripeness. In unripe apples, the starch content is higher 
and as the apple ripens, the starch is gradually converted into sugars such as glucose, fructose, and sucrose. This conversion process makes ripe apples sweeter than unripe ones. So while raw apples contain some starch, the levels decrease as the fruit matures and ripens. Onions do not contain significant amount of starch. Instead, they primarily contain simple sugars and complex carbohydrates such as fractans. Fractans are type of soluble fiber that onions store as their main carbohydrate reserve. Unlike starchy vegetables like potatoes or corn, onions have only trace amount of starch, with most of their carbohydrate content coming from those soluble fibers and sugars. The amount of the starch is so small that it is unidentifiable in our test. So we can say that our test is negative for the presence of starch in onion, since we do not see any black or blue color in the area where we put drops of iodine. Am I right? Take a close look. In conclusion, the iodine test for identifying starch is a straightforward and effective qualitative analysis method. By observing the color change a blue-black upon the addition of iodine, we can confirm the presence of starch in various samples. This experiment demonstrates the unique interaction between iodine and the helical structure of amylose and starch. Through this short practical exercise, we not only identified starch in different foods, but also reinforce our understanding of carbohydrate chemistry and its application in food science and biology. The iodine test remains a valuable tool in both educational and research settings for quickly assessing starch content.